All right, so can you break down? All right, so so for what people here, he was going downtown to actually go buy some socks or something for his he son? He went to get, they left my house. I didn't see Duck that day because that night he went home. And my son, last words to me, I say, you finna go home? He stared at me for like three seconds. He was like, yeah, ma, I'm finna go home. That was the last thing Doc Duck said to me, physically. And home to him wasn't in Chicago at this time? No, he stayed in East Chicago. He stayed in East Chicago. I lived in the suburbs at the time. So every, every year, August 5th, we celebrate my grandmother. That's her birthday. Play cards. That's all we did. You know, Duck started finding out. He just started separating himself from people. And he really basically made himself family oriented. He had nothing but his 57 cousins and his 151 great grand cousins. Like, literally, he was cutting off completely. And it just so happened, it's tragic. All right, so walk, walk us through. You said he was, uh, he told you his last words that he was, uh, that my baby said to me was, Yeah, mom, I'm going home. Uh, because we had got into a little fake argument because he was disciplining his son. And, and I was like, You're not finna whoop him and make him stand in no corner. It's gonna be either or. But my daughter was like, Mom, go get your grandson because he already whooped him and now he got him standing in the corner. So I came in the back and I'm like, you whooped him. He just looking at me. I'm like, if you whooped him, he not finna stand in no corner. This is my grandma voice coming out. And he say, this my son. You can't tell me what to do. And I looked up at that big motherfucker and I said, you my motherfucking son. I can't tell you what to do. <laughs> so he like, you right, ma, you right. And we had that little, it wasn't nothing. I cooked some chicken rings, I think, and some french fries. And he started getting his kids, CJ and my other grands, Aiden, ready. And I say, you finna go home now? And he looked at me for three minutes, and he like, yeah, ma, I'm finna go home. He said it just like that. Mm -hmm. So that was the last words my baby said to me. But I had to get up early that day of the day he actually was killed. That's why I wasn't at the house. He was there, but I was out with my daughter because that's when I found out she was pregnant. Duck never even knew that his little sister was pregnant. We didn't get a chance to tell him because he had got killed, everything. That's why I wasn't at the house. And they say he was laying across the floor in his phone, smoking the blunt. And he like, because he didn't know, because he ordered him something online too, but he didn't know if it was going to be there about time his birthday. So he like, well, I'm just finna run down. Everybody was trying to go with him, the whole house. He telling them, no, stay here. I'm coming right back. We finna play cards for Granny. Like, he didn't want nobody to go with him, Adam. He didn't want nobody to go with him, Ryan. And he didn't. He made, he told everybody, he tell Juan Juan, come on, drop me out, woo, woo, woo. That's when he went to the KFC on 75th and State. Mm -hmm. And that's when his female friend picked him up from right there. And that's when he went downtown. All right, so he was with the girl, too, as well. Because I, I heard a girl got shot. Yes, the one who got shot with him. Yeah. She she was also injured. And the stand is by the line. Bus. And do you, do you believe that the dude from THF who allegedly dropped the location on him, do you believe that that was over a girl? It's not a legend. I seen the video, Adam. Oh, okay. It's not. And, and what it was, see, the first store was Mulani's. See, I did a whole big old press conference. The first store was Mulani's. That's when I'm assuming he saw Duck. Mm -hmm. You have to be buzzed in in there. You have to be buzzed in. It's not a store you can just walk in. You have to be buzzed in. They have to buzz you in and out. So Duck and two more people were in there, and... This guy and the guy that was with him apparently came in the store. And they supposed to be acting like fans. Now, Duck never even knew who this guy was, per se. He wasn't no op duck, no, no opera ducks, because Duck didn't know him. You know what I'm saying? 
Two years before that took place, Duck used to mess with his baby's mother, who he ain't messed with for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So that's why it makes it so weird to me. I'm not finna believe like, yeah, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm seeing this boy lie to these damn people, whoever he talking to on the phone by the security guard who secretly recorded him. And I heard that boy say out his mouth. Um, first name he asked for was D thing. Dirk's brother. Cause they were like this. That's what fucked me up. My sister used to do D thing here. Yeah. I asked Mezu, if you ask me, I ain't lying, I ain't no capping what I'm telling y'all. These are all facts. That's why they don't want me to talk. You know what I'm saying? So, he just was a bitter bitch ass nigga. He was, point blank, period. Ugly ass. He looked like an alien. I don't give a fuck with no. Because if that man would have never did what he did, my son would still be alive. So, I don't blame nobody but his ass. Mm. The most. And they got to be the dumbest motherfuckers in the world to take that ass on Oak Street and kill somebody at 426 in the fucking afternoon. So they can't blame nobody. That's why I don't understand this fucked up ass culture talking about snitching and all this shit. How's that snitching? You either a witness or you a motherfucker um, assailant. Which one you going to be? Which one you going to be? I mean, it strikes me that the one of the things that makes you unique is that like a lot of parents of rappers who lose their life or whatever, the parents are kind of oblivious or they're they're not like tapped in like the way you are. So it's like extra painful for you because you actually like know so many of these people from these gangs or who end up rapping or whatever from early on in their life and stuff. So it kind of like hits you extra hard. Yeah, and it's hard to deal with. Like, it was so much stuff that was trying to prevent me from coming here today. Mm. Adam, like, from the moment I got off the plane, some, my house flooded. Really? My house flooded. My basement flooded. And you take these things to heart. Like, <laughs> you you take that as, like, a little bit of a message? Divine and the mixing, man. Mm. And I know every. It's just, it's, it's, I don't know how to say it without nobody feeling no type of way because I'm going to speak my man. And it's facts. Like, to be oblivious, to not see the fucking facts and they in your face, something really wrong with you. Something really wrong with you. And I've been around these kids from Boss Trail to Ja'Kyra to Lil B to to crack to Mona Lisa to Kayla B. All these kids have been in my house. And I used to throw parties for them. And they used to have fun. So the reason they coming at me knowing how thorough I am lets me know like what's the problem? Cause y'all know me. I ain't with that internet shit. I, I got million dollar stories out. Mm. I don't want the clout that bad. Yeah. I don't want it that bad. This is my life. This is how we used to live. And the minute my son get on the phone and talk to Jay Prince about getting him out a contract that he thought he had with Sony, when it wasn't with Sony, it was a dish, a furnishing deal that Clout Boy ain't got because of Duck. But he not knowing this. So before he can get his affairs together, I'm left to have to deal with this shit. Because everything that's his is going to be his. Everything that belongs to my son, he's going to get it. I need everybody to check out NoJumber.com. We officially started a blog. It has in-depth articles about current events, music, et cetera, plus all of our content in terms of podcasts, interviews, et cetera. And you can get some exclusive new merch if you check out NoJumber.com. So make sure you tap in.